Hello and welcome to this seven part series on basic transmission components and operation. This first presentation we're going to be talking about planetary gear sets. Now in general the purpose of these lectures coming up, all seven of these lectures, are really to give you a crash course on how an automatic transmission works so that way we can go straight into these units and start overhauling them with a little bit of understanding of what we're looking at. So we'll go straight from these basic lectures to in-depth lectures on specific transmissions. This presentation is meant to be generic, meaning that there's going to be components in this presentation that you're not going to find in all transmissions. And as well, there's going to be things in transmissions that we're not going to cover in this basic series. That, that's the reason why we move straight from this basic lecture to these specific units and cover the uh, operation and the components specifically in those units. But this seven part series is really about giving you an, a rounded overall knowledge of what to expect in most transmissions. When we think of how an automatic transmission operates, there's really three realms in which they operate. One is the mechanical side of things, like the mechanical operation. We've got planetary gear sets, the clutches, the bands, the one-way clutches, shafts, drums, the hard parts that we find on the inside of the transmission. Also we've got hydraulic operation. When we think of the hydraulic operation, we're thinking of things like the oil pump, the valve body and all of its valves, accumulators, the fluid, check balls, that kind of stuff. And then we also have the electrical operation. With the electrical operation, we're going to be dealing with things like solenoids, the on-off type solenoids that live in two states, either on or off. Pulse with modulated solenoids or linear solenoids that can vary their output. We think of things like range switches, pressure switches, pressure sensors, speed sensors, temp sensors, all these things that provide information to a module or to a computer so it can make decisions on how to control these different solenoids. And all these components are going to be covered in different lectures throughout this seven part series. So this first one we're going to focus on is primarily just the planetary gear set. Let's look at the planetary gear set and its role in the automatic transmission. A planetary gear set is a simple three component gear set with a sun gear in the middle, planetary carrier that houses these little pinion gears or planet gears, and then an internal gear. Sometimes you'll hear this referred to as a ring gear or an annulus gear. So the three parts end up making the planetary gear set. And in a planetary gear set, we can actually get six different underdrives, overdrives, and reverse combinations. The largest gear in a planetary gear set is this planetary carrier. I know it fits on the inside, but it's going to act as the largest gear. The smallest gear, which is obvious, is going to be the sun gear. The medium-sized gear is going to be the ring gear or internal gear, whatever you want to call it. The reason why this is important is because when we think of the best underdrive that we can get, we're going to want to have a small gear driving a big gear. That's going to be an underdrive gear set, or under, that's going to be an underdrive ratio. Um, small gear driving the biggest gear is going to get us the best torque multiplication, the best gear reduction, and that's what we're going to use for like a low gear, like first gear or something like that. And if I want the best overdrive, um, I would take the biggest gear, which is my planetary carrier, and drive the smallest gear. This is a table that just pretty much lists all that out. And we'll look at this here also when we're figuring out the gear ratios. But here you can see along the top I've got the gears. I've got a sun gear, ring gear, carrier. And then what happens to torque as it transfers through it and also the speed. So I, I've divided this really up into what's happening to the carrier because that's the easiest. So if we think of the carrier as being input, we already know the largest gear is going to be input, so that means I'm going to have an overdrive. And if I input my carrier and I output my ring gear, my ring gear is, remember, the medium-sized gear, I'm going to have an overdrive, but it's not going to be the best. It's going to be what we would call a minimum overdrive. And if I input the carrier and output the sun gear way over there, largest gear driving the smallest gear is going to give me a maximum overdrive. And if I output the carrier, realize that whenever I output the carrier, I'm going to get a gear reduction. So if my input is the sun, smallest gear, outputting the carrier, the largest gear, I'm going to get a maximum underdrive or maximum gear reduction. Um, if I input my internal gear and output my carrier, that's a medium-sized gear driving a large gear, and I'm going to get a minimum gear reduction. And then these last two are reverses. So if I hold the carrier, remember if I ever hold the carrier, I'm going to get reverse rotation. So if I input the sun gear, and oh, my finger went off there, see that? Wah! And if I input the sun gear, output the internal gear, hold the carrier, 
I'm going to get reverse, and it's going to be a gear reduction reverse. And lastly, if I input the internal gear and output the sun gear, I got a medium sized gear driving a small gear, that'll end up being an overdrive reverse, which probably isn't used too often. All right, so, so I'm going to go ahead and show you these different ratios so you can kind of get in, uh, a visual of that. And kind of to start out with, I'm going to go ahead and put the, take my paint pen and put a mark on all three of these gears. I got a mark on my sun gear, my carrier, and my internal gear. If I want the best gear reduction possible, I'm going to take my sun gear and drive it and output my carrier. I'm going to hold my internal gear. So in order to get an underdrive, overdrive, or reverse, I have to drive apart, hold apart, and then that third part's going to be the output. I'm trying to get the best gear reduction possible if I take my sun gear and output my carrier, small gear driving a big gear, and hold my internal gear, I can see what kind of ratio I can get there. I got one rotation of the input, two rotations of the input, and then there, my, my output and my held gear match. So I just did one revolution of the output gear, and I got about 2.7 revolutions of my input gear. So that would be, give me a gear ratio of 2.7 to one. It's always gonna be, the ratios are always gonna be expressed with one rotation of the output gear. So even in an overdrive situation, I would have uh, like a 0.7 to one or something like that. I'll try this medium gear reduction here. It's a little harder because I'm gonna have to hold my sun gear, input my internal gear and output my carrier. Well, I might be able to do it here laying on the bench. So I've got one revolution of my input. And now my mark's lined up and you can see I went about 1.6 or 1.65 revolutions of the input to get one full rotation of my output. Uh, what I was doing was I was driving my medium sized gear and I was outputting my largest gear and holding my smallest gear. So it's the medium sized gear driving the largest gear, that's an underdrive. It's just not as good as the smallest gear driving the biggest gear. For overdrive, if I were to take my largest gear, the carrier, and output my smallest gear, my sun gear, you can see I get, it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty high speed gear. So that was overdrive. I brought my sun gear around one revolution. My carrier only went probably four, oh, maybe not even four tenths of a rotation. So it'd be a 0.4 to one overdrive. That's not a very practical overdrive. We wouldn't see that probably. A more common type overdrive would be taking my largest gear and outputting my medium sized gear and holding my sun gear. So this will be a little difficult to do, but we'll try it. So I'm gonna take my largest gear, hold my smallest gear, and I'm gonna wait for one revolution of my medium sized gear here. And there we go. And you can see I went with my carrier I went around about 0.6 or so revolutions, maybe 0.7. So that's a more practical overdrive, about a 0.7 to one overdrive. You might have noticed that so far I haven't been holding my carrier. I've either been outputting the carrier or inputting the carrier. And the reason why is whenever you hold the carrier, you're gonna get reverse rotation. I do get one overdrive reverse and one underdrive reverse. So I could show you that now. Not like an overdrive reverse is very useful, but. So here we go, we've got these marks are all lined up. If I hold my carrier, if I input my internal gear or my medium sized gear and output my sun gear, medium sized gear driving a small gear is giving me an overdrive. So, but you can see it's in reverse rotation. And what I do is I get about a 0.7 to one overdrive. And that's not very practical, something that you probably won't see or use. But if I input my sun gear and output my internal gear and hold my carrier, that's, that'd be a more common reverse. You can see I've got one revolution here of my input and then, then it went back around. So I got about a 1.7 to one reverse rotation. So those are the six different combinations of underdrive and overdrive and reverse gears that you get with a single simple planetary gear set. Sun gear, carrier, and internal. 
Not to say you couldn't make a transmission that's super simple with one planetary gear set, but they are more complicated than that. So the simple planetary gear set is the general concept of what they do in these automatic transmissions. But they take it a step further and they make a combination of gear sets. Like for example, if you guys end up going through a simple, four, simple of a 4L60E, they've got a planetary gear set in the back and a planetary gear set in the front. And they actually have common connections between the front and rear gear set. But all the gears, except for second gear in this transmission, you can pretty much come down to one planetary gear set driving one planetary gear set part, outputting one planetary gear set part. You'll see what I mean when we cover those individual transmissions, but like, but like first gear, for example, they're only using the front gear set. In second gear, they are using both gear sets, front and rear. In third gear, they're only using the front gear set. In fourth gear, they're only using the rear gear set. And in reverse, they're only using the rear gear set. So other than second gear, it really does come down to one part driven, one part output, one part held. And uh, so learning the simple planetary gear set is important because it directly applies to what's going on in these transmissions here. Now, the very first transmission that we go through is the 41TE. And this transmission here has two gear sets, just like the 4L60E. Matter of fact, it's configured almost exactly the same as the 4L60E. Uh, with its common connections. We will go through these more specifically when we go through the transmission. But yeah, there you have is a sun gear. And we've got a carrier assembly. We've got a internal gear assembly. And then for the rear gear set, we got a rear sun, fits inside there. We got the rear carrier and we got the rear internal gear. So it's just two gear sets. It's a, co a combined or combination gear set. And just like the other gear set I showed you there, the 4L60E, it is, except for second gear, it all comes down to basically one simple gear set when you're actually in that gear. Now, of course, those are just a little, the 4L60E is a four speed, the 41TE is a four speed. Things get a little bit more complicated when we get into, like, this is a Honda 10-speed transmission, they actually have four planetary gear sets in this unit. Yeah. They actually have four planetary gear sets in this unit. Here's a little sun gear. We've got this. There's like a carrier in here with an internal gear, another carrier. Do this without hurting myself. Put this off to the side. Got a another uh, internal gear that's going to fit around that carrier with the sun gear. So that's uh, look on the inside of that. Another internal gear that meshes with. This carrier, that carrier um, on the inside of it is the cutest little sun gear you've ever seen in your life. I uh, could probably hang that from your rear view mirror. You know, it's a cute little thing. So we got, oh, look at there's more. And yet there's more. I'm just building this thing upside down. Got yet another sun gear carrier and internal gear. So four planetary gear sets in this unit, but hey, they give you 10 speeds. So that is, uh, that's why you need more than just one simple planetary gear set in order to get 10 usable forward speeds in a reverse. This right here, if you decide to go through it, is the uh, 6F50. You can see we've got a sun gear carrier. Built into that carrier is a internal gear assembly. We got the another internal gear carrier assembly. Sun gear that's actually always spline to the input shaft. And we've got yet another planetary gear set. This one actually just has three planetary gear sets in it. 
Um, there's a sun gear for it, and this would drop into the internal gear. I'm not gonna fight to get all that in there. It looks like it wants to drop in though. Get in there, there we go. There are a variety of planetary gear sets in these transmissions that even though, that even though it all does break down to a simple planetary gear set like, like this, this one is actually out of a three-speed transmission and they did have two of uh, two gear sets in that transmission in order to get three forward speeds in a reverse. But most transmissions are going to have a combination of at least two gear sets for at least four speeds. And then you're gonna have more, um, three gear sets for five speeds and up. And then, you know, here we have an example of a four planetary gear sets for a 10 speed transmission. But the planetary gear is the kind of the premise, the basis of most automatic transmissions. Not every automatic transmission uses a planetary gear set. Honda, uh, they do now. This is a Honda 10 speed, but previously they just used, uh, they used helical cut gear similar to a manual transmission. They just automatically shifted that. And we will we'll see Hondas um, at some point in this class. That's just a kind of an overview of a planetary gear set and how we utilize planetary gear sets in automatic transmissions. When we go through these units, we'll look more closely at specifically how to inspect these planetary gear sets. But right now I'm just kind of giving you a basic run through of things that exist in most all automatic transmissions. So you might be wondering, how do they actually figure out the gear ratios to a planetary gear set? This isn't really gonna help you diagnose a transmission or anything like that, but it is kind of interesting to know. A ratio calculation is pretty simple. We've got our sun gear teeth, we just count those. And in this case, the sun gear teeth on this little gear set in the example I have up there is 42 teeth. We count the number of teeth that we have on our internal gear, which is 72. So I've got 42 teeth on my sun gear, 72 teeth on my um, internal gear. And I just add those two together and that add those two together, you get 112. So that means the carrier is gonna act as a gear that has 112 teeth. It doesn't actually mean that it has 112 teeth, because if you imagine, I could have three carrier gears in here, four, five, but they'd all be the same size gear. So I wouldn't want to add all the teeth up because I don't think that would come out to be a very accurate estimate. So really when we go through and look at this, we count the number of sun gear teeth, count the number of internal gear teeth, add them together, and then we use this equation. Really, it's just the output over the input that's going to end up being the gear ratio. So this is using the calculations based off of the gear set in the video um, and also the, the one I've been holding all this whole time. So if we look, remember it's output over input. So the output gear is the ring gear. We got 70 teeth on the ring gear. The uh, input is the carrier. So I got 112 teeth. If we do the math, that comes out to 0.625 to one overdrive. So it goes over a little more of six tenths of a turn around for one turn of the output. Now, if we look at the second one here where my input was the carrier, my output was the sun gear. So I would have 40 over 112 input being the, um, Planetary carrier, output being the sun gear, that equal the gear ratio, which you can see is 0.36 to one. So the input wouldn't even turn four tenths of a turn around and I get one full turn on my output. So in the next example, my sun gear is the input, my carrier is the output. I've got the smallest gear driving the biggest gear. The output be 112 teeth, the sun gear is 40 teeth. We do that math, we end up getting 2.8 to one. So that'd be the lowest gear that this gear set could provide. And now this one would be the minimum gear reduction. So we can see the input is the ring gear, the output is the carrier. Output is still 112, but now the input is 70. That gives us a 1.6 to one gear reduction. For this reverse example, I've got my carrier being held and my input's the sun, my output is the internal gear. So output is 70, the sun gear is 40. I end up doing the math, I get a 1.75. That's the reduction reverse that we've got or the underdrive reverse. So this last one, my output is the sun gear, my input is the internal gear, carrier is obviously still being held. So my, I'd have a 40 over 70, which gives me a 0.57 to one overdrive reverse. Like I said, probably not a common setup. So this little brief introduction to a planetary gear set, hopefully you understand the names of these parts. Hopefully you understand that in order to get a gear reduction reverse and overdrive, you have to drive one of these parts, hold one of these parts, and that third part's gonna be output. Hopefully you understand a large gear drives a small gear is gonna be an overdrive and a small gear driving a large gear is gonna be an underdrive. And hopefully you understand that you get eight different combinations to a simple single planetary gear set, a new, including neutral and direct drive. And then you get two underdrives, two overdrives, a reverse underdrive, 
and a reverse overdrive. All through one simple planetary gear set. Most transmissions will end up having anywhere from two to four planetary gear sets in there. So that way not only do we get usable gear ratios, but they're within a, uh, a close proximity to each other so they make sense, logical sense, while we're shifting from one gear to the next.